in the 50s and upper 40s, so it's going to feel nice and cool outside. And definitely for this weekend, too, if you wanted to open up the window before you head to bed, you can definitely do that. You'll get a nice cool breeze and you don't need to turn on the AC. That would be nice. Yeah, so always, it'll be really I always nice. sleep better that way. Yeah. Crack the window, shut the AC off. Oh, the mosquitoes have to go away, though, because I, I, I'm yeah. already wearing my winter coat outside, so I just don't get bitten on my arm. So oh, I'll yeah. welcome the colder weather. Yeah, it's rough at those games. Football it is, games. it is. But the games are fun, and we're going to have that after the break, because guess what? It's Friday Night Beyond the Likes, week number two. Get ready for this. You aren't going to want to see this. Stay tuned. The games to see, the players to watch. Friday night, Beyond the Lights, starts now. It is Friday again, and that means it's Friday night, Beyond the Lights. And tonight was week two of high school football. And I just want to emphasize that one more time for all of us, okay? Week two of what we expect will be a full season of high school football, with the option to play an eighth game at the end of the year, which is actually one more than ever in the past for New York State, and with a sectional tournament, and with a state tournament, possibly, if you make it that far. So that means one very specific thing. Every single game this year counts, and it counts a lot. So it might be early in the year right now, but these games tonight could have changed everything. Proctor played on a Friday night instead of its usual Saturdays. The Raiders had a date with three-time defending Class AA state champion Cicero North Syracuse. The North Stars already ranked eighth in the state this year, so Proctor had a little bit of trouble. Played in the state tournament in 2019 though, trying to get back into it after a year off last year, but it was not as a good showing tonight maybe as last week was when they got their first win of the year. A shutout most of the way. CNS showed why it was really great and three years in a row won the entire state. Proctor's senior Sander Lynn scored Proctor's only touchdown late in the game, so the Raiders got on the board, but now they are one in one after the loss, 33 to six. Staying in Class AA, a pair of Black Knights, both looking to bounce back from season opening losses. Rome Free Academy at Henninger. Right there, RFA strikes with Nava Baez getting the ball in the hands of Dayton Kelly, who got past not one, not two, but three defenders on his way to that end zone. So that made it 7 0 RFA leads. But things got a little tougher. You just saw the sack there. So Henninger putting the pressure on. The close game stayed close all the way as RFA pulls off the win, though. 30 24, now 1 1 this season. Whitesboro was back on the traditional middle school field after playing on the high school turf earlier this year in March's season, hosting Auburn, who is ranked eighth in the state for Class A tonight. Colin Skirmont there is picked off a miscommunication as Auburn's Isaiah Parkman ties it up at six in the quarter. Skirmont actually had Whitesboro's first touchdown with a 61-yard run. But the Warriors get the ball back after they convert a fourth down. It sets up that play on the one-yard line, and backup quarterback Kyle Meyer right there runs it in. Skirmont and he split the quarterback duties tonight, but every time Meyer was taking the snaps, he ran every single time, just like he did there. So that made it 13-6. Whitesboro becomes 15-6 after a safety. Then Deshaun Hutchinson scored a touchdown to seal the game at 23-6. The Warriors defense did not let up a single point tonight and also held Auburn, the ranked team, to fewer than 140 yards of total offense. After an explosive 65-8 win last week, if you want to talk about explosive offense, New Hartford came in ranked 10th in the state for Class B tonight, and the Spartans' home opener, Cortland opponent, early second quarter. That's Alex Culver with a 62-yard sprint to already give New Hartford a 21-0 lead. Three minutes later, Cortland goes to punt the ball deep in their own territory, but Javante McCornkle blocks it, and Wilkinson Joseph recovers to score the touchdown. So 28-0. And working like a well-oiled and a well-paced machine, another four minutes after that, it's Culver again. Deja Vu runs the ball 58 yards this time, down the field again to score. Oh my gosh, what a short run compared to the 62-yard run, 58. That was his third touchdown of the night. He scored again after that. Four of the Spartans' seven touchdowns tonight belong to Alex Culver to make it a 48-6 victory. Head coach Jim Kramer had said before the season that this team's been really largely untested. But we knew that a lot of these players had gone undefeated in JV a few years back, and watch out, they're pretty good at varsity too. So if it wasn't already exciting enough to this point, you're going to want to see what we have after the break. We have highlights of Holland Patton, Waterville, and Herkimer. Those games were pretty exciting. So coming up, we have those. Stay tuned.
This is Friday Night Beyond the Lights on WUTR. Another team playing its home opener tonight was Holland Patton. And the Golden Knights had won the Section 3 Class C title back in 2018 and has gone just over 500 in the two years since then. So Holland Patton hosted General Brown under their own lights again tonight after only playing one game on their own field last year, looking for their second win of the season. A good start. Jump into a close game too. 7-6 to six Golden Knights trailed by one in the second quarter. 12 seconds left in the half and the Lions with the ball. Elijah Raleigh throws to Gabe Malcolm for the touchdown. The extra points good to make it 14 to 6 deficit for Holland Patton. Adam Jones had scored that one touchdown for HP by bringing a kickoff all the way back, but that's all the Golden Knights would get as the Knights fall 28 to 6 and they're evened out overall 1 and 1. In Class D, Waterville played at Herkimer. One of these teams going to get its first win of the season tonight. Junior quarterback Nick Caruso launches one for the Magicians, but Waterville has some better tricks there. Senior Brent Barnes snags it to turn the ball over in the first quarter. But one minute later, Herkimer with the ball again. It looks like the same play, but this time Dante Howard uses his height to bring it down for the touchdown. Herkimer leads 8-0. A high snap for Herkimer leads to a safety 8-2 in quarter two, and then Waterville follows it up when they get the ball with a short pass. Turns into a huge gain by Matthew Markew. First and goal from the four-yard line. Handoff to Barnes for the score. Barnes booming on both sides of the ball tonight to make it 9-8 Waterville. But Herkimer holds it there, tacks on 20 more points in a row to win it, 28-9. Other scores tonight, Little Falls wins by 20 points in Class C. The Mounties improve to 2-0, and Mount Markham gets its first win of the season with a 30-point victory over Canastota. And also, just a note in ice hockey tonight, that Devils Prospect Challenge was played. That's the young players for the New Jersey Devils organization, some who have played for their AHL affiliate and some who might play for the new AHL affiliate of the Devils. The Utica Comets this coming season, just 30 days away. They did lose 3-0 to the Sabres tonight, but hey, hockey's back. After the break, we'll take a look at some of your college games that we have this weekend and what you can expect from Division 3 all the way to Division 1. Stay tuned. You're watching Friday Night Beyond the Lights on WUTR. On a night filled with high school sports, let's not forget about college football in the area too. Colgate has had a tough start to the 2021 season. The Raiders have lost both games so far and have been outscored 75-3. to That makes it four losses in a row for them going back to last season. And Colgate's not scored more than one touchdown in a game since November of 2019. But not to just list off all of the early season rust here. Raiders first year head coach Stan DeCosti says that he's trying to mix things up by bringing in some new energy to the practices. I mean, I've had the you know, privilege of working under Coach Biddle and under Coach Hunt. And then, you know, with my dad as a longtime head coach from high school. So I've had like three main head coaches in my life where it would be foolish not to use influence or the influences that they've had or the different things that they did. So I definitely, you know, pulled something from those guys. But at the same time, I wanted to make sure that my personality was a reflection of the program, you know. So, so just, you know, from a discipline standpoint, from, you know, sense of urgency at practice, from the attention to detail stuff, just kind of building a foundation and, you know, making the practice feel different for the guys because I wanted, I wanted it to purposely feel different, you know. And, uh, and we practiced a certain way here for a while, which worked, you know. So I wanted to build off of that and, and switch it up so they felt that change and felt that kind of, hey, we're going in a new direction and an exciting direction. Hopefully, you know, competitive um, is, is up there where, you know, I like the, the structure and, and uh, you know, sense of urgency at practice and constant movement and, and, and tempo and, and which, which kind of brings a competitive nature and competitive intensity. So, so hopefully, you know, they get a sense of that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I guess, a little old school in the sense of just, you know, having our helmets on at practice and making sure the locker room's cleaned up every day and stuff like that to where, you know, the little things, taking pride in that type of stuff. Um, and I think, you know, I'm in this because of the relationship with the players, you know, and, uh, you know, if we, if we get on them, if we coach them hard, it's still with a positive mindset. Um, and uh, at the same time, if we get on them, then, you know, 10 minutes later, we'll have our arm around them or we'll talk to them. And, and uh, if we see them in the hallway, you know, they're all our guys and we want to make sure we communicate with them and take care of them. So it's uh, that's something where, um, you know, hopefully they, they get a vibe of that. You know, I'll, I'm here for all 90 of them. Colgate looks to translate that urgency from practice, though, onto the field during game day. The next chance is tomorrow at home against William and Mary 
at 1 p.m. Also in Division Three, Ham uh, well, in Division Three, I should say, Hamilton College opens its season tomorrow. The Continentals open the season with a conference game. Hamilton's won every game against Bodoin since 2015, by the way, so that's four in a row now. In the Empire Eight, Hartwick College plays in its first road game of the year, looking for another win, too, at Curry at 4 p.m. And then at 6, Utica College looks for its third straight win. The Pioneers host Western New England University in their first home game of the year. So if you plan to go there in Utica tomorrow, make sure to wear orange for the orange out. And Syracuse plays on the road, and it's kind of a local rivalry. Not often do we see this matchup. Syracuse at U Albany at noon. So we'll close out uh, this broadcast when we return. We're going to take a look, though, first at what we can see on this station, WUTR, and then on WFXV this coming weekend in college football and also in the NFL. So stay tuned. This is Friday Night Beyond the Lights on WUTR. Well, there are games you can catch on WUTR this weekend. Number 24, Miami, is going to host Michigan State at noon. And then also number 6, Clemson, is going to be at Georgia Tech at 3.30. That's going to be right here on WUTR. If any of you are interested in checking those out, now they're ranked because it's week two. In a matchup of ranked opponents, too, number 22, Auburn, plays at number 10, Penn State. So that's going to cap off the night on this channel. Then on our sister station, WFXV, number 3, Oklahoma, hosts Nebraska at noon. USC is at Washington State at 3.30. Both teams are 1-1 one and one so far this year. And then on Sunday on WFXV, it's the NFL Week 2. Your Buffalo Bills play at the Miami Dolphins, and the Bills are coming off a tight loss. Miami also off of a one-point win, so it should be interesting. Buffalo has won the last five games against Miami, scored more than 30 points in each of those, so that's going to be an interesting AFC East matchup. Absolutely. So, you know, but I hear that weather is a big factor at all these games uh, this coming weekend. A lot of rain across the country. But uh, are we expecting any this weekend for us, Dan? Yeah, so if you look at the seven day forecast, we'll see we still have some scattered showers and possibly an isolated thunderstorm or two on Saturday with a weak cold front that's going to be moving through the day. Though we do have some drier and sunnier conditions for Sunday. So if you have any outdoor activities or plans for this weekend, definitely do it for Sunday. And then for Monday, Tuesday, we'll still continue with that dry weather. Wednesday is going to be the start of fall with the autumnal equinox so we do have some showers expected for there and Thursday and we'll have temperatures getting into the lower 60s David. Okay so a little bit cooler but a little bit rainy. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of each. Okay I'll get the jackets out. So thank you Dan. Thank you Jamie. Really appreciate it. Hey by the way we're gonna have more Friday Night Bound the Lights obviously on Fridays but now you can submit who you think is the athlete of the week from any sport and any level of play too. Go to cnyhomepage.com put in your submission tell us where they're from and we'll have the first winner announced next week at this time. So make sure to tune in, stay friendly, and have a great weekend.